Sarah and welcome to ET Now Hangouts with me, Ankita Saxena. Well, I'm back with yet another exciting episode of meaningful conversations from influencers, the latest trends and what's hot in the market. Well, let's get started with our first conversation then. People build their careers building brands or talking about them. He built his by dissecting them, well, quite literally and figuratively. Well, this social media influencer has stirred many pots for many consumer brands with some even receiving legal notices from the government. Well, popularly known as that Bon Vita guy, he calls himself the food farmer on social media. Well, I'm in conversation with Revant Himmat Singha. Revant, welcome to ET Now. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, so Revan, tell us about your journey. How did you get started? I mean, what you are doing can be best described as a war of sorts against consumer FMCG brands. How did you get started? You even gave up your MBA uh, for at IIM Bangalore, right? Yeah, so that was the IIM Bangalore part was long ago. So I had gotten into IIM Bangalore. I decided not to go. Got abused by my family for not going. <laughs> lot of things happened, but that was long ago. Uh, then eventually I had gone to Wharton for my MBA. This is like a few years later. Um, yeah. Then I was working at a consulting firm. Um, I was at McKinsey. And it was there, like, you know, as a consultant, you usually um, structure business problems. But I've always been interested in social impact. One of our biggest issues in our life is health. Like, one of the most important things in our life is health. Yeah. Health is determined by food. And the food we are eating is packaged food. Which is very different from what our grandparents and in thousands of years of history, we are like eating packaged food for only about 50 to 100 years. It's a very new thing. And most packaged food, whether we like it or not, are blatantly lying to us. Most social issues are very difficult to solve. But packaged food is relatively not that difficult to solve. You just need three things. One is consumer awareness, which I'm trying to do through my videos. Second is brand accountability. Like, you know, usually com companies scare us. Yeah. But we are, I'm trying to scare, in some ways, them in terms of like yeah. making them more accountable. Yeah. And three is we just need a strong policy. So, Ravant, I want to come to the main, uh, <laughs> the most controversial topic, and that is, uh, you know, you're known as that Bonvita guy, and that's for a reason. That's because uh, one of your videos dissing the brand uh, went viral, and that really got uh, Bonvita's parent company, Mondelez, into a firefighting mode. They sent you a legal notice, and they got a legal notice from the government thereafter. What happened there? How did you manage to stir that pot? So I made a video about Bonvita showcasing a very simple video. I stated whatever they shared in their own package itself. So the front of the package, I showed them what they say, like strong muscles, strong bones. And I just turned it around and I said, okay, this has approximately 50% sugar and like all of that. So that video went very viral, got about 12 million views on Insta, um, like a lot of celebrities, like Paresh Ravel shared it, and a lot of other celebrities shared it. Then of course, the brand sent me a legal notice. They asked me to take it down and they asked me to apologize. And my parents were also a bit angry with me, you know, why am I getting into all of this? I had a good job in the US, why did I leave all that and why did I do this? So I apologized, I took down the video, I apologized. Yeah. Then the media picked it up and uh, media, like every, pretty much every media channel showed this and the public got very angry, you know, why did they, why did Bon Vita, you know, speak out against me? And Bon Vita also issued a statement that whatever I said was not scientific. Okay. And then it is kind of like a miracle almost one of India's biggest nutrition bodies, mm -hmm. they are like a team of eight, nine doctors and leading nutritionists. They signed a full, like, you know, there were like eight or nine signatures of like leading doctors and nutritionists yeah. saying that whatever I said was correct. Mm -hmm. And then the government sent them a notice asking them to uh, reduce slash remove their packaging. I've got messages from thousands, like tens of thousands of parents, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this, yeah. that they've started reading labels for the first time in their lives. Right, but aren't you scared, aren't you paranoid about these big FMCG behemoths uh, suing you, sending you legal notices, because you're waging a war against them, against the age-old beliefs that they have been, uh, you know, propagating to the consumers? I'm not saying this out of any arrogance, but I think at this point they are more scared. Um, <laughs> um, and the point is that whatever I'm, I'm there are two aspects. The one is a legal risk, second is some physical risk outside of the legal aspect. So legally, whatever I'm doing is not wrong. I am, whatever I'm stating is what is there in their own package. I'm just reading it out loud. And my, I've always said this, like, you know, if when we review a movie, uh, like, you know, you see the biggest uh, movie reviewers saying, okay, Pathan was good, Javan was good. Yeah. Um, I am reviewing a food product. That's all I'm doing. I'm, all I'm saying is, is this food product good or not? So if a movie critic can review a movie, 
why can I not review a food product? Um, so what according to you is is the problem that Gen Z, Gen Next is facing right now in terms of health and nutrition? Is it the lack of awareness about uh, what to consume? Uh, is it because they're consuming more junk or is it that essentially they lack the talent or the probably the, you know, the talent, not the talent, perhaps the skills uh, to read a label. What is it? Uh, what is the problem that Gen Next is really facing? I think honestly, it's a mix of everything. I um, mean, there's no one single thing, but I feel the entire world often we are focusing on the things we do once a week, as I mentioned about the Coke and Bon Vita example, that we're drinking Coke and once a week, and but we have Bon Vita twice a day. Yeah. So 14 Bon Vitas a day, but one Coke, a, 14 Bon Vitas a week, but one Coke a week. So I feel sometimes Gen Z focuses on those, on those things which are not as important. Like for example, I always say this about chocolates and biscuits as well, that most of us, we think chocolates are the enemy. Yeah. Um, whereas we usually have chocolates approximately once a week. But we, we wake up and in India, we chai ke saath do biscuit. Like we have two biscuits yeah. with chai and then in the evening again, two biscuits with uh, chai. And what does biscuit have? Biscuits have palm oil, maida, sugar. My point to Gen Z is often, I feel like they need awareness of what you're eating at home is often the issue. Yeah, of course the restaurant food is bad for you, yeah. but it's the day-to-day -day things we're eating, which is I think the awareness is needed. And I always say this also, um, sirf ghar pe mat khao, ghar, kha, ghar ka khao. Correct. So which is why I'm like, um, try to focus on what's at home, try to start reading labels, try to, f like, you know, we spent so many, I always say this, it's a bit controversial, not, not really controversial, I mean, I'm pretty controversial anyway, but um, <laughs> uh, I always say this, like learning how to read a food label is an even more important skill than learning how to code. Right. So speaking of reading labels, it brings me to my next question and a very important one because uh, if you say that, you know, it is a lack of skill, uh, you know, to read a label, yeah. then could you help our viewers understand firstly how to decode a label, how to decipher a label, how do you go about reading it? If you could share a few sure. tips or advice. Sure. First of all, the most important thing you should do when you, when you buy anything is turn around the f uh, product and look at the back of the package. Most Indians when we turn around the product and we look at the back package, we only look at two things, the MRP and the expiry date. And we think, yeah, as long as expiry date is like, you know, as long as it's not expired, okay, we'll buy it. Right. And there's one like sort of humorous sort of a line is that the longer the expiry date, the shorter our expiry date, the sooner we expire because usually products with a longer expiry date. We'll have more preservatives. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's what they say, the longer the shelf life, shorter our life. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's not always true. There are some products which have a long shelf life which are not bad for you. That's like a rule of thumb. Yeah. There are exceptions. That's one thing. The other thing is look at the ingredient list. The ingredient lists are listed in order of weight. So the ingredient which comes first is the, what is which, what has the you, most, in descending the, order of weight. Yeah. The, the ingredient which is first will have the most amount, the quantity will be the highest, then the second and the third. Right. So I always tell people that if the first three ingredients have either sugar, maida or palm oil, try to not have it too frequently mm -hmm. because chances are that if it's in the first three ingredients, it's ha it probably has a lot of it. So that's like another quick tip. Uh, usually try our best to buy products which have only one ingredient. If you're buying oats, should have only one ingredient, oats, nothing else. Yeah. So. Um, Usually, again, so again, a rule of thumb, there'll be exceptions. The shorter the ingredient list, the better the product. Okay. So if it has only three or four ingredients, it's better than like, you know, having 15 ingredients. Okay. Another rule of thumb is, um, there are too many rule of thumbs. Uh, I feel like, it's like Ritik Roshan. Like, anyway, <laughs> anyway so, uh, so another rule of thumb is, um, like if there are ingredients which you cannot pronounce, uh, usually, it's not that great for you because usually those are like toxic chemicals often. Okay. Uh, or if there are too many numbers like emulsifier 471, emulsifier 480, like, you know, usually if there are like weird numbers that you do not recognize, I do not know each and every number off the top of my head, yeah. but usually, I mean, the lesser of all of this, the better it is. Like there are many uh, products which call themselves something like fresh tomato ketchup yeah. or, um, there are products which call themselves ORS and ORSL. Yeah. And most people don't know, those are just the name of the products. Okay. 
But if you actually turn the package around, in the bottom, the little written, not an ORS. Oh. That is only a trademark and does not represent its true nature. Yeah. So there are many companies which have named themselves Fresh Tomato. Yeah. Fresh Taza Milk, ta Taza Paneer, Fresh Paneer. So these are companies that have named their product Fresh. Hmm. The product, the product not, is not fresh. Yeah. So Raven, finally, uh, you know, reports, reports suggest that uh, Indian packaged foods are some of the unhealthiest packaged foods in the world. Why do you think that is the case? Do you understand labels, so tell us why is that? So the reason why Indian packaged food, I mean, honestly, I often criticize these brands, but to give them credit also is that you have to realize the Indian purchasing power is not that high. So, and all these companies are trying to cater to like, in one go, 50 crore people, 70 crore people in one go, like, you know, a biscuit brand is selling for less than five rupees, so less than 10 rupees. So, in, if you want to cater to everyone, you have to compromise somewhere. So, while I do criticize these brands, I also understand and empathize with them that the costs in India are so, the price point is so low, which is one of the reasons why um, the quality is also not that high. The second is the awareness is not that high. So even if they were giving better quality ingredients, yeah. the consumers would not necessarily be willing to pay for it because we don't even read the label, we don't right. even understand it. So if someone is being honest, they have to pay the price for honesty mm. because they'll probably run out of um, business. Yeah. And I've been told by, like I went to some MBS college and I was teaching them a few things and they were like, I can probably get a fake organic certificate in three to four months and that will increase my cost of, uh, so why, why would I get a real organic thing which will like, you know, make my cost of production double when I can get a fake organic certificate possibly in four or five months. Right. So there's that issue again, like consumers won't even find out whether it's actually organic or not. So if I can just get a fake certificate, I would rather do that. Right, uh, Raven, thank you so much for joining us. It was you. a very informative session. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. Well, with that, it's time to slip into a short break. But you don't go anywhere. After the break, we get you what's trending and what's hot in the market. Welcome back. You're tuned in to ET Now Hangouts with me, Ankita Saxena. Well, Japanese global apparel retailer Uniqlo has announced the latest in its expansion plans in India with the opening of its highly anticipated first store in Mumbai. Well, on the sidelines of this launch, I spoke to the India CEO Tomohiko Se. Let's take a look at this conversation. Japanese retailer Uniqlo has opened its 11th brick and mortar store in India and the first in Mumbai in Phoenix market city, Kurla. October will also mark the anniversary of Uniqlo's four-year journey in India and it has since marked its presence in the north of India with 10-odd stores. As a part of its marketing strategy, Uniqlo has also recently signed up Katrina Kev as the brand ambassador. Hello Mr. Say, oh, welcome to ET Now. Hello, nice to meet you. Thank you. Uh, so, Mr. Say, tell us uh, this is the first store for Uniqlo in Mumbai. Why do you think is this uh, the opportune time to have an offline store? It is after four years of uh, India operations for Uniqlo, right? So, because uh, we are focusing on the quality of the business, uh, because our life concept is need to uh, have a proper operation. So, for first four years, we are focusing to making a strong operation in Delhi, then now is the time to coming to Mumbai. Right. Also, the reason why I asked you about the offline store, a brick and mortar store, is because, you know, since 2020, since we went into a lockdown, uh, you know, the customer focus has shifted to uh, online buying and especially the retail part of it. So, my first question is that, you know, uh, what is your share of uh, the e-commerce business uh, versus your brick and mortar business? We cannot uh, uh, disclose uh, this exact number, but uh, our target is 15 uh, percent of the total sales from e-commerce. So that's why, so, and, and also we are almost achieving this number. Okay, and uh, what is the offline, uh, right now, with the offline presence that you have, uh, you have approximately 10 stores in the northern part of the country. So uh, what share does that command? Uh, the offline, the, the brick and mortar? So I cannot say the exact number, but uh, 
our target is 15%, 15%. So we are almost achieving uh, the, this number. What are the latest trends uh, in India? What are uh, you know, what is the youth consuming right now? What are the trends going on? So trends, uh, people like uh, more going to the functional or variable products, not for the short term trend. So that's why so we are bringing a life concept which has a functional and the variable and uh, also the high quality. So people, I, I feel that people are going to be more variable sense after COVID. Right, so would you mean that your line of products, so basically, you know, uh, even after pandemic, people were moving more and more towards athleisure wear or comfort wear. And you also mentioned that how, you know, you're, you are also pivoting towards more functional wear. So tell us, uh, you know, post, what is the difference, uh, you know, after the pandemic and you know, pre-pandemic, how has that changed and, you know, how has the company pivoted towards uh, the changing needs for the customers? From my viewpoint, people looking for more essential value, not only just a short-term fashion, a short-term trend. Uh, people are looking for more essential value like a function or a comfortable, those things. So what are your expansion plans in India in terms of uh, number of stores? Uh, this would be your 11th one uh, in, in Bombay. Uh, you already have a lot of presence in the north part of the country. Are there any plans to expand to the southern region? What are your expansion plans? We are always looking for best place, uh, not only the Delhi, but also Mumbai, of course. And, uh, but uh, as I mentioned, we are uh, to bring the life concept to consumer properly. We need to bring the, uh, we, we need to find a good partner, so who can be make a long term partnership. So that's why, so we are looking for, but uh, we don't have the exact number of the target. Uh, it depends on the how much we can find a good partners. Okay, and you know, what are the challenges uh, that you see in, uh, in a diversified country like India? Or, you know, since four years you have been present in, in India, what have been your challenges so far? Uh, there are so many challenges, so, but uh, at first uh, we are not uh, uh, well known the, in market uh, because we are very new brand in India. So that's uh, at first uh, the, our challenge, uh, we make uh, brand, uh, we increase our brand awareness in this market. Right. And speaking of brand awareness, uh, I mean, uh, we have seen a new campaign. You have hi you've hired uh, Katrina Kaif as your brand ambassador. And I do see a couple of social media influencers also, uh, you know, uh, promoting Uniqlo. Uh, so, uh, you know, are you going more aggressive on the ad spends bit? And will you be promoting uh, the brand more in, in India? And uh, how is that going to pan out now, the marketing plan? So there are so many marketing channels on the way. So, but uh, always we are looking for the, the channel or the uh, influence of our keywords, uh, having uh, matching our brand concept or not. So not just famous, what, not just big name. So how much uh, meet our life concept. So this is a, our essential point of marketing. All right. So, and also since you mentioned that you are, uh, you know, getting more and more influencers uh, to uh, market the brand. Uh, the target for Uniqlo, uh, then you would say that it is more targeted towards, are you targeting the youth more, a certain age bracket with the influencers? So our life concept is not segregated target. So we, uh, our one of the important factor is made for all. So we are, uh, our brand, uh, li uh, our life product mix is uh, uh, made for all of the uh, consumers. So that's why, so sometimes some some products, some items is much uh, refer, prefer by uh, your young people, but at the same time, uh, the function or value itself is more uh, wider range. Right. Uh, also, um, tell us what are your faster selling products? Uh, what are the products that are flying off the shelf uh, more as compared to the other product verticals? So, the, in four winter case, ultra light down and the hoodies, he take as top three categories. Mm -hmm. But uh, recently, the knitwear like a uh, premium lambs wool or uh, souffleyan, those knit sweater also increasing. But uh, year around, like 
like a summer product, uh, UT, which is graphic T-shirts, and also U Aerism T-shirts, and Aerism Inna is uh, quite uh, popular in India. All right, Mr. Say, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And well, it is that time of the show where we bring to you what's hot. Hot on everybody's radar is the India-Pakistan face-off at the ODI World Cup 2023 on October 14th. Though the tickets were sold out as soon as the window for the sale of tickets opened, for all the disappointed fans, the BCCI even released 14,000 tickets for the match. Well, for those who could not avail, restaurants and bars are gearing up for the big day with big screens and bumper deals on drinks and meals. Festive season is upon us with Navratri fever set to engulf the entire country. So let's take a look at where your favourite artists are performing. Well, first up, the Queen of Garba, Falguni Pathak, is performing at the Navratri Utsav event that will be held at the late Sri Pramod Mahajan Sports Complex in Chikuwari, Borivali West from 15th to 24th of October and at the Police Gym Khana at Ghatkopar East on 29th of October. The Great India Dandia Festival at the Geo World Garden starts from the 20th to 24th of October, also offers live performances by the best Garba artists in the country. And finally, high-tech events bring to you Rang Ras Navratri 2023 with Bhumi Trivedi, who has been awarded the Best Tandia Award for many years. The event starts on the 15th of October, will go on for the next 10 days, and you can grab your tickets for all these events on Book My Show. Well, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of ET Now Hangouts. I'll catch you next week with some more interesting conversations, the latest trends and what's hot in the market.